Good morning and welcome to our art cast. Today I'm joined by a really special guest. Rachel is a great friend of mine. Um, I might even say partner in crime. That might be the case. Maybe, maybe that's exaggerating it a hair. Maybe not. Uh, Rachel is the director of the Senior Center here in Sydney. It's, but it is the Shelby County, correct? Senior Center? Right. It's the Senior Center of Sydney, Shelby County. I always want to make sure I point that out because a lot of our organizations are county organizations and when we introduce ourselves or we talk about what we do, we want to make sure the whole county knows that, that we are a county organization. But today I want to talk with, eventually, because I know how we get. <laughs> this could be interesting. I want to talk about art and the Senior Center. So first though, because I'm curious, if I'm curious, I think other people are curious, <laughs> maybe not, about, you know, where did you, where were you born, where did you grow up, how, what was your path into this? Well, um, I believe life is a journey and every, every uh, experience you have is, is bringing you uh, to, to where you're supposed to be. So, okay, having said that, that's true. <laughs> Having said that, um, I'm born and raised in Sydney, Shelby County. Um, actually, I refer to myself as one of the original PJPH kids. You know, we went to Port Jefferson Elementary School, which doesn't exist anymore. Really? They got that got tore down when I was in my seventh or eighth grade. I'm really dating myself now as to how old I am. She's young. <laughs> you mean, you mean young. Um, so, anyways, um, you know, grew up in Shelby County, um, country farm kid. You know. 4-H, um, you know, got into, as, as, as uh, most kids do, um, you know, working odd jobs at a young age, babysitting, you know, uh, various things, restaurant work, everybody starts in the restaurants, right? You know, um, I gotta tell you, that's one thing I've never done. Really? I'm too clumsy. Oh, well, you know, I am too, but, you know, you just... Well, I don't think coffee in someone's lap. Well, that's, that's true. true. That's true. That's true. That's true. So I just, I knew that that was not ever going to be a path for me. <laughs> I didn't last long in it either. So um, then kind of went toward the, you know, sales, customer service type of industry, okay. you know, worked several different places. Um, and then back in 2008, when the economy kind of went uh, yeah. downhill, um, you know, found myself unemployed. And so a friend of mine said, well, you should get into healthcare. Healthcare is still hiring. Because in 2008, nobody was hiring for sales. That's right. Anything, service, really. Or anything that I was qualified for at the time. Um, so I went into a little course, you know, to become what's called a STNA, State Tested Nursing Aid, or, you know, uh, patient care tech if you're at a hospital. Wow. Yeah. I was already in 40-ish, and, you know, so <laughs> that's a tough, physically draining job, uh, to say the least. But, but it's how I found my niche. Uh, well, oh, that's kind of cool. Yeah, because um, you know, I I am the product of a late life. Um, uh, uh oh, uh, for my parents, they were. I like that late life. Uh oh. <laughs> yeah, late life. Uh oh. Um, you know, I was told that uh, um, you know my mother didn't think she was pregnant until all of a sudden she felt a kick. And so the story goes, when my father got home, she kicked my father. So oh, what you know how true that is? I understand. But so anyway. You know, I understood, you know, the the more mature generation. Yes. So, right. right. Got into healthcare um, and thoroughly loved it. Um, worked at a couple different healthcare facilities, long-term care facilities. Um, and before I came to the senior center, what I was doing, the capacity that I was in, I had merged the the healthcare and the sales background together, and was doing some marketing and sales for a local. Uh, facility. Right. You were at Dorothy Love, right? Yes. That's what I thought. Yes. Um, and so I was working in their marketing and sales department, you know, helping people make the decision to come into right. um, that community. So part of that was going out and about in the communities and uh, talking about the facility. So I would go to the senior center um, and, you know, I did, you know, speaking engagements there. I called bingo. Um, my husband used to love to joke that I was a professional bingo caller. Whoa. Um, now that's a talent I did not know you had. <laughs> <laughs> I think it come in handy. 
Anytime you need a bingo call or I'll be Oh, there you might me. regret that because I will find a reason. <laughs> But anyway, so I was in the senior center a lot, and I got to know the previous director, Eileen Wiseman, pretty yep. well, and you know a lot of the members there and, and whatnot. And I had stopped in one day, um, you know, when uh, right before Christmas in 2018, right? And you know, Eileen told me, "Oh, hey, I'm retiring," and I'm like, "Oh, well, wonderful." And I, I looked at her assistant, thinking, oh, "Okay, let me congratulate her because she's right. going to, you know, naturally." And her assistant, Darla Wilkes, she says, um, I'm retiring also. That's right. I forgot that. They yeah. retired together. Yeah. Eileen retired March 1st of 2019, and Darla retired March 31st of 2019. And so, you know, it, it happened that, like I said, it was the week before Christmas, so they were just kind of sitting around having, you know, like an employee lunch or what have you. And, um, you know, I would always stop in and bring them, like, a little thing of candy or something, you know. Right. And so... Eileen looks at me and she says, well, you should apply. And I thought, well, I'm, well, that's nice. I'm, you know, I appreciate the, the boost of confidence, but, you know, I, I'm not looking for a job. I, I, I have one. I yeah. like it. You know, I, I was where I totally felt God had told me to, to be. You know, he placed me at Dorothy Love at that particular time. And, you know, I was good, you know. Right. Right. I was good. So long story short, you know, um, it came about that I became available for employment um, in the beginning of 2019, and so I thought, well, I'll throw my hat in and see what happens. And, um, you know, next thing I know, I'm at the Senior Center, and I'm glad you are, actually. <laughs> it's, it's, it's a blessing to me because I thoroughly enjoy what, what we do there and the people we interact with and what we do, not just for the members, but the outer community. Yeah. It, it's really a blending of, of everything I've gone through in life as far as career, you know. Um, it's, all, it's all together, you know. Um, right. Getting along with different personalities. <laughs> Um, you know, and you've got a few you. over there. <laughs> we have some gems. Oh, you do. You we really have some, have some gems. I love them. I love every single one of them. Um, they keep life interesting. Um, and um, you I just to never be on your happen. toes. Oh, I am. I'm and good. it's so much fun because then, um, like I said, Darla Wilgus retired as well. So then uh, we brought in Cindy Lambert okay. as the program coordinator. And um, some people might recognize her name. She worked at Agape for 20 years. Right, years. right. Yes, right. So, you know, we brought different experiences in. And um, it's just been a lot of fun. And, you know, some of the members joke that, you know, we're Lucy and Ethel. And so we just kind of run with that, you know. And and we have fun. I mean, I don't know why they're joking. That's actually closer to the truth than people <laughs> really know. That is true. That is true. If they were to stop down, they, that is so true. But, but um, you know, what we do there, it's a 50 and over center. Right. You know, what people don't understand when they hear senior is they think it is for, you know, 65, 70. And it's not. It's 50 and over. So you I joined a lot. Of, uh, I, I should join. <laughs> Hey, uh, this year, that's my that's my New Year's resolution. I will join the Senior Center. Okay, New Year's was like five months ago. Where? Well, there's another one coming up. <laughs> <laughs> Need to get you and Zilla both there. That, that, that's true. The thing I people may know, we do our children's productions there. You have a stage in there called the Cameo Theater, and this organization really started there. Mm -hmm. It was the Senior Center, or maybe this is why we're such a trio. It was the Senior Center, it was the Historical Society, and it was and it was Gateway Arts Council, all in the same building. Right. Oh, whoa, can you imagine that today? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> I don't know if it's let's just guess. Can the community imagine that today? But I think well, there is a stage. We could just move all three of our desks up on the stage. We'd wait a minute. We'd have to move them out for performance. I mean, it's a great space for the oh. kids. Yes, it for is. For us, it's, it sits 400 max, but it's a smaller stage, mm -hmm. and it's not like we never do a blackout with the kids. We never go completely dark and then raise up lights. We just don't do it. It's too scary for little kids. Mm -hmm. That place is absolutely perfect mm -hmm. for a children's production because it's they can sit. We put them. I, it, sometimes I get floundery 
Mm -hmm. I change subjects, so just bear with me. Mm -hmm. I know. We, you know me. Um, we have the kids sit on the floor right in front of that stage, mm -hmm. and there's those three steps up. We've had kids sitting on the lip of that stage, and uh, one child in particular, he was so enamored with it that he had managed to wander backstage. Oh my. It was a Christmas production, <laughs> and backstage was Santa and Mrs. Claus waiting to come out. Uh oh And I followed him back, and there he stood, and when he saw the clauses, he froze. I mean, just <laughs> froze. And he was probably two. Aww. So I picked him up. It was the end of the show when the Santa came out. And I carried him out on stage because he was frozen. He was just not. Aww. So I, I know his parents. I, when I returned to his parents, I said, I'm sorry. I think he got a little afraid. He goes, no. We told him Santa knows if you're naughty or nice. And he knows he wasn't supposed to go back there. <laughs> I got busted. But I guess all that story was to talk about how what a wonderful place the senior center is. That's that whole room up there is so friendly. Mm -hmm. It's it's a fun place. Uh, you do a lot of things people don't know that you do. I believe you used to have a trainer. Do you still do? Mm -hmm. have a personal trainer? Yeah, we have a personal trainer that comes in uh, two days a week and for an hour each morning, and uh, mainly in the fitness room, setting up you know workout programs with our. Um, our equipment in the fitness room. But then we also have a lot of volunteers that run a lot of our exercise classes. Um, oh, Move, and Groove. Oh, yeah. Move and Groove, which is kind of like a Zumba. Um, I'll, I'll just put it to you this way. When they put Proud Mary on, I'm not even going to try and keep up. No, oh, that's thank a you. riot. Oh, it's, they, I'm telling you. Everybody goes at their own pace, which is what's so wonderful. Um, and they have a lot of fun while they're doing it. And uh, it's it's one of our most popular classes. Um, I, can, I can believe that. Yeah, and you know we do a lot of other things. You know we do tai chi and volleyball and chair exercise and pickleball and just a a, a ton of things. There's not always things. something going mm -hmm. on over there. You have always. carry in lunches. Mm -hmm. Have you been able to do those since? The um, with the pandemic and all of the protocols that we have been under since we reopened in September 2020. We have not been able to do the carry-in luncheons, which is sad because we have some awesome cooks. Oh, I always loved. I get like a little little teaspoon of everything, and yep. and my plate ended up looking like a, a oh, yep. cornucopia of, of everything because it was it's such a favorite food. place to speak. Yeah, I know. Because the we'll lunch have you there. Again. Oh, okay. Because the luncheons are going to come back. I know. Isn't that unbelievable? I know. We get to actually open again. I know. June 2nd, I cannot wait. On June 2nd, I just cannot wait. Our members are excited about it too. Um, oh, so, that's great. Yeah. A lot of some of our programming we couldn't do when we first opened back up is returning finally. Um, and I'm, I'm very happy about that. Um, and then also, you know, with the vaccines coming out and people getting vaccinated, yep. you know, people are feeling safer and safer to, to come out and. and um, we were you know, worried involved. about that. A lot of our volunteers come from the senior center. Yeah, they're wonderful. They're my favorite. They're my ticket takers and my ushers at our shows, and they're the best. Mm -hmm. They are just. But I was worried. Mm -hmm. I, I, you know what? We've we've had everybody scared for over a year. Are they going to come back out? So I'm thrilled to hear everybody's excited. Oh yeah, everyone's excited. They're coming back out. You know, they're they're ready for life to get back to, dare I say, normal, or at least pre-COVID. Yeah, I, never said I don't that know that we've ever normal. had a normal yeah. life, but <laughs> ever, <laughs> ever. <laughs> no, we we yeah. fun, exciting. Those right. are the words I would use. Normal is not one I right. would use. Right, that's ever. what I was told. I couldn't say back to normal. I had to say back to pre-COVID. Yeah, and I, I said, okay, that's fair. Fine. Yeah, because that you know, I'll go downstairs and there's cards going on downstairs. Mm -hmm. The fun part about the senior center, and maybe I shouldn't admit this, is I know how to get to every spot in that place. <laughs> <laughs> oh, even the secret door in the stage? Uh, is that on the floor? Maybe you don't know that one. I know the one that goes back downstairs. Oh, no, there's a secret door in the floor. Ooh, the I don't you know everything. everything. Oh, shoot, now I'm going to have to learn that. <laughs> but, you know, they have, you have the most amazing light board ever. And I think maybe it's better as an antique than a light board. <laughs> <laughs> right? 
We have updated our sound system though. Our sound system's great. Our sound Absolutely system is great. Awesome. We even added more drop mics. So, so. I board, however, <laughs> is as big as maybe I don't know, I'm trying to think of how it's not maybe a suitcase, not even that big. Half mm -hmm. a carry-on. Not I, even I, that. I would say about the size of a lady's um briefcase. You know, uh, purse. <laughs> yeah, they, that's about it. It has <laughs> on, <laughs> off, complete dark out. Mm -hmm. yeah. You can fade quickly to dark out, and that's about it. Yeah. But you know what, though, I I am not upset or angry at that because you know technology hates me, and I don't really am not a fan of it. So I well, can work that light more. <laughs> it also <laughs> makes people if they're you know when well, the performers come, I've never had anyone complain. Yeah. Not one. Yeah. It's because this, you know we're with kids, and right. they have to do their job without all of the right. bells and whistles and technology. You know, you just have to play that. Then the kids, you know, nine times out of ten, they're not going to notice if it's a you know they're just so right. into the show. And um, I am hoping when we can get our thing with us is a lot of our touring companies had to lay off all their people mm. and they aren't sure when they're bringing them back so I'm hoping by 2022 we're back up with children's mm -hmm. you know we always have children's programming these are just shows that we bring in right and um, I know there was one and I there's one thing we were working on together I hope we get to do that I hope so, but then I've also got a few more ideas of things uh -oh. that we could do. So stay dare, dare we tell them <laughs> what our idea is? Hmm. Go ahead. Okay, I we're going to tease you. It's kind of already been hijacked a little bit, but that's Oh, we'll take it back. <laughs> we have air marshals. <laughs> oh, my word. Uh, we're gonna that's an edited part right there. <laughs> Polite, lovely people. Um, <laughs> we're going to do Seniors Got Talent. Yes. We were going to do that in 2020, but it just got then COVID. Then COVID. So we're going to go back to some of that, which I'm going to use this to sort of segue into part of what they do at the Senior Center. They have a lot of art there. We actually do, um, surprisingly. And um, when I sat and thought about it after you called me, I, I was amazed at what all I could uh, oh, yeah. highlight. So, should we talk about that? Let's talk about that. I wanna. I did. Um, for those of you who don't know, I went back to college at my young age and had to take a health class, which I thought, oh boy. But it turned out to be great, <laughs> and we did this whole unit on Alzheimer's. Mm -hmm. And one of the things they talked about was dance mm -hmm. and how certain. Uh, things that you do in dance being one of them actually helps your brain. It helps keep it active, it helps counteract dementia. It was just a really neat, I remember reading it and thought, okay, maybe there's something in this class I can take out of this. <laughs> For personal efforts? For, yeah, you know. Uh, but um, you do, they do have dances there. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we have dances four times a year. Um, typically, we have it for a while, but you know, we're going to get back into that. Our first one coming up is this summer. Um, we're partnering with Tilda, the Historical that's Society, right. um, for a sock hop. And we had done a sock oh, hop in 2019, fabulous. so I'm excited about doing another sock hop. And, um, you know, uh, it's, it's just a lot of fun. Um, we pick a theme, each, each dance we pick a theme, and it can range from, you know, the raging 20s, um, to because when, when it became 2020, you know, we had right. planned on we didn't yeah. get to do it. We had planned on you know a, a raging 20s. They could go by the 1920s or the 2020s. Um, you know, we're going to do a barn dance theme. You know, we did the sock hop. We're doing it again. So it's always kind of fun because we try to you know make it a theme that right. people can really get involved with. Um, when we had the sock hop, they all dressed up. Was it the poodle skirts? Oh yes, there were poodle skirts and if you know you know the movie Grease, right? Oh yes. Okay, so you're looking at a Rizzo wannabe. <laughs> so I was Rizzo and Cindy was Sandy. Oh my gosh, how wonderful oh, yeah, is I, that? I had a black wig, short little black Rizzo wig and and my husband said, don't ever worry about it again. That doesn't look right on you. And I'm like, okay, I won't until the next time. Until the next time. <laughs> I won't wear it out in public. Uh, that will, I, right, right. I will agree to that. Right. Except at the senior okay. center. 
and we had fun. I mean, you know, we lip synced. You know, um, I lip synced. Everybody thought I was actually singing. I thought, oh, you really don't know me well enough. <laughs> there were no dogs howling. That's how you would know if I was singing. But um, you know, I lip synced to Rizzo's. Um, what was it? There are worse things I could do. So, oh, for the movie. Yeah. And people just, everybody had fun. It was a fun night. See, that's that's one of the things about what you do is that it's fun. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. And, and not only does it keep seniors active, mm -hmm. and it gives, it's like a home. It, it not, is. Not like a home home. Like a, <laughs> a home away from home. A home, you know? that's a better way to a, put a it. A second family. A second family. Yeah. Mm -hmm. They and come and see us every day. And, it's yeah. just wonderful. Mm -hmm. You also have a quilting group. We do, which you know we're going to we're gonna show you on the table. We have now this isn't a finished quilt. No, this is a um, topper, a top of it, right? Right. This is where they have sewn together all the different pieces, um, and it's kind of hard to tell right here on the table, but um, in each square is uh, like a heart. So each of them is shaped like a heart, you know, with their squares and triangles, and then they have the outer um, borders. What they'll do is they'll obviously put the matting behind right. it, and then they'll pick a color for the back of it. Um, you know, they might go with a, a bright red on the back or, you know, a, a green or just a plain cream. They'll pick one of the colors out of this to, for the backing. And then, um, you know, I know that there's a lot of quilting machines out there, sewing right. machine, quilting machines, but our quilters quilt by hand. That is amazing. I mean, yeah. you look at this mm -hmm. and the, I mean, I was just looking at the craftsmanship mm -hmm. and it's unbelievable. Mm -hmm. Right. The fact that it's going to be hand quilted mm -hmm. is somewhere. I mean, that's it's amazing. That is a quilt you want to hang on to mm -hmm. for the rest of your life, right? And so this is a this is the beginning stage. And then I brought a small uh, pillow where you can see how you know. I don't know if it'll show up on the camera, but if you look, Ellen, you can see the the stitching that they put in. Oh my gosh! Yeah, the quilted stitching that they put in. That it's all um, hand done. It's all hand done. And what they'll do is, um, you know, let's say people have um, put all this together, but they don't want to, they don't either know how to, to quilt or they don't have the time to quilt. So they'll bring this. That's what I was going to ask you. Mm -hmm. They'll bring this. Yeah, you and I think a lot. I know. Alike. That's what the scary, it's scary part is. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> um, they'll bring their, their beginning product like this to the center, and, um, you know, the quilters will quilt it. Uh, we have a quilting loom, a handmade quilting loom. Oh one of our members, gosh. oh yeah, Janet Fishbaugh, one of our founding members. Um, uh, we still have a lot of our founding members uh, still very active in the in the center. That's kind of amazing. It is, so, especially since we've been in business in 24 years. It'll be 24 wow. years in September. Wow. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. So the, the, the loom that they, she has was handmade by her husband. And so they'll roll this on the loom and they'll hand stitch this. And then when it's finished, They'll call the person, and they'll, you know, the person will make a donation for their oh work. Oh my God! And uh, donation to the senior center, so they get to enjoy what they love to do, which is the quilting. And the, it's also quilting is not just a sewing; it's, it's an art form. It's an art form. It really it's, is, because they won't just go on the squares. No, they you know make they a have pattern all around it. it. Yes, they, they, there's all these different patterns that they can do. They accentuate, they look mm -hmm. at a quilt and they can accentuate the parts mm -hmm. that need to be, I mean, accentuated and it's unbelievable. We have a beautiful one hanging on the wall, the ground floor, the center, that was from the, uh, the centennial. Okay. Um, and that they did. And um, it's gorgeous. You it's used to have with us a quilt show. That started during Apple Fest. Mm -hmm. well, Do you still have that quilt show? No, but doesn't mean we can't bring it back. I know. We oh. we did one here three years ago, four years ago, something like that. And we've been doing them here where we hang them on the walls, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. which you know it's you can really see it. Mm -hmm. But we've always had too many. Yeah. So we're gonna have maybe we'll just do a quilt street. There you go. Oh, hey, there's an idea. We'll just do quilts. We'll have to brainstorm this. I think so. Yeah. Yeah, I think so. See, you're now witnessing mm -hmm. what we do every day. Yeah. Oh, we could do it. Oh, let's mm -hmm. do it. Right? So I, I'm really 
the quilting is just amazing and I think people need to know that if they are doing the tops and they're putting them together and don't have anyone that would quilt it, the senior center will. Mm -hmm. And if anybody wants to learn how to do really the hand quilting, you know, and they're over 50, they can do it. They can come and join and Miss Jana is all the time looking for people. You know, when she's up there quilting and we do tours, she'll say, you know, do you like to sew? You know, come on down. You know, I'm always looking wow. for people. Because, you know, it really is an art form that's yeah, beginning is. to be lost because of technology and these quilting sewing machines. Right. And I and they're wonderful, the sewing machines, but right. they're not, like, as we showed in the pillow, you can definitely tell what has been hand quilted and what has not been. Mm -hmm. I mean, there's... There's, their lines are straight, but the stitching's not always precisely the same. Mm -hmm. And that's what is so neat, the time and the love that's been put into there. And the fellowship around it. Mm -hmm. Right. The chatting and the stories and that. Socialization. It's so huge. Huge. Oh, it's yeah. huge. And for these people, they still get to do what they want to do, mm -hmm. plus they get to be around friends. Right. And make new friends. And make new friends and make wonderful pieces of art, which is absolutely. So I also see a pot holder over there. And yes. I know you have. Is this knitted or is this? This is um, crocheted. Um, we do have a group of ladies that come in, and I brought a few things here um, as examples. Oh wow! We have a knitting and crocheting group, and um, they make different things. Um, this blanket is more of a lap throw, and you know, a lot of times we'll take them out to um, the nursing homes, or oh, um, you know, we, we use them as door prizes, or um, you know, it, in the past they've given these or like small little lap quilts to like the fire department and police um, for you know emergency situations. I don't think they've done that for a while yet, but I'm right. gonna get back into doing that, and it's just you know. It's an art you form know, too, I think, because they can I do, do all these different. Well, look at how perfect this is. I mm -hmm. don't see a wrong stitch in it. I mean, I don't. That's kind of amazing. Yeah. And you can't even tell where where they took one color and started a different color. It's no. just it's seamless right there. I mean, it's you just, just amazing. Yeah. Yep. And you know they'll make things like this and put it in um, what's called our um, boutique. We have a little, little... I didn't know you had that. Oh, yes, we have Woo! a boutique. You have, like, gone up in the world. Well, it's been there since forever, but... Okay, so you've been yeah. up in the world. Yeah, exactly. And I'm just a slow one. Catch up. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> this is just a... This is a tame <laughs> mug. Let's just be honest about it. We're on our good behavior. This really is our good behavior. It is. I know. I'm kind of proud of us. I am, so too. Now, we haven't reached the end of this yet, but oh, I'm still pretty We've got a ways to go. But then yes. we're gonna hide five because we did it. <laughs> Probably. <laughs> That'll be off camera. Yeah, yeah, maybe. maybe. So yeah, so we have a little boutique where you know the ladies will create things. Um, I shouldn't just say ladies and gentlemen. Um, you know, because there are some woodworkers that you know oh, will write things in I occasionally. Know that um, not a whole lot, you know, we've got a few things, but, um, and they'll bring things in, you know, like this pillow was in our boutique, you know, um, and again, the money, the proceeds go to the senior side, you know. That is neat. Right, right. That's so, really neat. you know, it, people think, oh, knitting and crocheting, is that a, that's not really an art form, but, but it is because you know, there's so many different patterns. Well, and if someone hasn't done this, mm -hmm. they don't understand it is an art form. Yeah. I mean, because I'm here, I crochet, and I am here to tell you nothing I made looks anything like this, mm -hmm. even remotely. Closely. I have an Afghan at home. I wish uh, I didn't bring it because it was made by my grandmother, who, golly, would be around 50 now. But anyways, um, but I, you know, it, I still have that, you know, yep. and it 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 lasts. These are things last. Lasts. I have. Um, baby clothes mm -hmm. that my grandmother made for mm -hmm. my children and now they're at with my grandchildren mm -hmm. and you know they're just perfect right I mean I but I do think that this sort of uh, art form is coming back mm -hmm. yours the more we become technologically advanced mm -hmm. 
the more you're seeing the quilting and um, crocheting and knitting coming back. Well, and then when everyone was in quarantine, they had to find something to oh, occupy their time. That's I don't for sure. Know, idle hands just means I'm going to eat, and that's it. Mm -hmm. So a lot of people have started new hobbies. And the, this, is, you know, and if you're over 50, the senior center is the place to go. Mm -hmm. I think you brought some other things too. I did. I did. I know. Let's see. Yeah. We can. Let's see if we can accommodate. We can turn around. <laughs> see if we're good with this. Oh, we're gonna play Vanna. Oh, well, okay. I'll let you play. All right. So let's talk about this one first. Okay. The one on the far left with that adorable little dog. Okay, I, you brought this really neat little dog with you. You want to explain a little bit about this? Yes, this was actually created by one of our members, uh, Boone Wyford. Um, this oh. is his little dog, Maggie. Um, I'm not sure the date of this uh, piece of, of artwork that he did, but um, it's been hanging in the center since I came, so I'm assuming it's been a while that uh, since he made it. But um, he's a talented artist and member, and although we don't do painting at the senior center right. um, you know we have a lot of members that do have that talent and we've got a lot of, of pictures you might hanging. be able to fix that well there we go oh Let's, there's another, there's another thing put on our list yeah. yeah just can't get paint on my new carpet now come on we oh be okay okay well anyway so <laughs> we'll I guess, talk about that what? yeah Ooh, maybe the oh. parking lot I don't know we'll figure something out but, but yes yeah, so he he created this and it's been hanging in the senior center for a while and and I just grabbed it because this morning I was looking at all of the, the, the uh, things that we had hanging and I thought this caught my eye because it was so colorful and right. it was so cute and it was so personal. That's, I think that's the thing, that this artist wanted you to have a picture of something that meant a lot to him. Right. And I mean, if you look at it long enough, I mean, I might be a little crazy. I'm not a, an art you know, right. guru or anything, but I just love the eyes of the dog. I feel like it's like a picture that you would take with a camera right you can see his eyes you know it, it caught my attention well, so what i want people to know is that over 50 doesn't mean you become inactive right exactly that there's at the senior center there's painting there's quilting there's uh knitting and crocheting there's dancing there's all sorts of art activity and at choir. the senior and oh that's right we didn't even talk about choir well, let's get through the other paintings okay. Okay. Put this one down, and we have this, this one. one. Um, this one is actually a pencil drawing. Okay, that's right. um, it was created by uh, Dave Kaplan uh, or Dale. Excuse me. I don't have my glasses on. See, uh, I'm seeing your moments. <laughs> okay, so Dale Kaplan in 2002. Um, it is a pencil drawing he did of the senior center, the building. And his mother, Farrell Kaplan, is uh, one of was one of our founding members also, and she is still very involved She's in the senior force. center. Oh yes, yes. She? And she is the historian um, of the center, and, uh, and just recently she has brought me um, <laughs> volumes oh. of um, history, and I'm still pouring through them, and I love it because she recorded every single detail from the idea to create a senior center and how the steering committee was put together. I mean, wow, she has documented everything. Does she um, have um, when it was all still shared? Yes, it's all oh, in I would there. Love to oh, yes, that. and old newspaper articles and just you know she is the historian. So her son created that piece, and um, so I brought it today piece. because I thought you know he even got the detail of the bricks. Yes, he did. You know, and, and you can see the detail of the bricks even, you know, five, six feet away. Right. You can see the detail. That's true. So I was impressed with that. Again, I don't know a lot about art, but I know what I like. And I, I know really that we like nice that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I know that's that's well done. I know that's good. Yes, yeah, good. Exactly. Um, and then this one, should I lift this one down, do you think? Would it be easier or just slide it? We can, we'll just slide it. This one was donated just recently to the center to hang on the wall. Uh, one of our members, um, I believe this was his grandmother that painted this. Oh, or his mother. Wow. Something like that. Mother or mother-in-law. I should have written it down better, but he's still a member, so I can ask you him. You can ask again. him, yeah. yeah. But the artist is Betty Atkins. Betty Atkins, A-D-K-I-N-S, I think is how it's spelled. And it's just a, a beautiful, you know, Christmas scene. And I know we're in summer, but I love Christmas. It's one of my favorite holidays. And I just, 
I love this picture because, you know, really in my mind captured like when I was a kid, a country right. Christmas. Right. It's really, it's very Norman Rockwell. It's very, yes. um, it has to give you a good vibe, a really good feeling. Mm -hmm. it, and the detail in the pine trees and, you know, even in the background, you can tell, you know, a house and a church and a steeple and I don't know, I just... But once again, I'm just amazed and thrilled, actually, that the Senior Center means so much to these people that they're donating these personal items, which is what you would do to a family. Mm -hmm. And that's, again, a point I want to make sure everybody understands is that this is, the Senior Center is like an extended family. It's it really, really a blast. I always come out of there feeling better you know, than when I went in. Mm -hmm. I've laughed, I've probably, you know, <laughs> if you leave the senior center and you haven't laughed, you didn't experience the senior center. Exactly. Because it's just fun. Mm -hmm. So I guess right now we're going to talk a little bit about the choir that you have. And I know, I'll tell you why I know you have a choir. <laughs> because every time we have a children's production, we must just have this knack for scheduling right after a choir <laughs> Because <laughs> I've moved those chairs and that piano a number of times, and it must be a popular thing that you do over there. Yes, our choir, or what's referred to as the Senior Center Singers, um, it started as a small little group and has grown to oh, over 40 people. Wow. Was that a Kent Smith? Um, to my recollection, from what I read in our histories um, that I mentioned, right. Janet Bourne started a small little singing okay. group activity, and then when Frida Maxson, who's a retired um, music teacher, gotcha. I think she went, worked at Sydney City, I could be wrong on that. If I am Frida, I'm sorry. But Frida Maxson has taken over um, the uh, director of the choir, and it has grown considerably in the last five years, six years, I think she took it over, something like that. And um, uh, Sharon Geisler also okay. helps with that. And so they are up over 40 people, and wow. it, they sound wonderful. Now, can, have you, during the pandemic, probably haven't been able to do that, have you? No, and even when we opened back up, we couldn't really do choir practice right, right away because, um, you know, many of the other um, uh, health orders for other parts of, of industries and businesses um, were not as strict as ours. Um, ours was very, very strict because we do deal with an at-risk right. um, uh, demographic, you know. Uh, so we, we've had to be very careful and so we just recently brought choir practice back. Um, I think they came back in April, I want to say. Yeah, that's pretty um, recent. But not all of them have come back because we, we've had to social distance them still. Right. So they're spread out on the floor, okay. six feet apart. Which, by the way, this is a large space. This oh, is yes. not a tiny space. This is very large. It yes. holds 400. So to space 40 people would be easy to do. Yes, absolutely. Um, so we've had to social distance them six feet apart. And because of the, the mask mandate in our original health order uh, that came out when we opened, um, facial coverings are required. It, it, no question. So, um, you know, they got these um, uh, clear plastic shields. Plastic shields. And so um, about half of them have come back to practice. Um, but, you know, they're looking forward to June 2nd when it all goes away because, yeah. you know, I, like I said, I'm not a singer. People would pay me not to sing, um, but apparently in a choir you need to hear the person next to you um, so that you can make sure that you're in the right key or the right. right tone or what have you. And being six feet apart and some of them right. having hearing loss, it's it's been difficult. Oh, and then even thought about that, yeah, even singing, even though you don't have that cloth mask on your face. Having that facial shield, it, it decreases how how well that would affect the sound. Right. So it's been a struggle for some, um, and so they're looking forward to being able to come back without those face uh, face coverings. And again, the majority of them have been vaccinated, so that's helpful. Right. And um, so, but they sound wonderful. We have a wonderful choir. They perform, you know, many different places. We've had. Um, uh, they they've done the Shelby County Fair for several I think years. They, yeah. 
Veterans Day, um, the Veterans Program at the Stelly County Fair. They go out and perform at other um, housing communities, right. and I mean, a, a variety of different uh, places that they go and perform. And then, um, if wherever they're at, if they if they receive any type of payment, again, it, it's donated to the senior center. They have their own little fund in in our um, in our senior center to kind of help pay for sheet music. Right, because that, kind that of is kind of pricey. It is, and you know, again, I'm not a an arts person, but you know, when I first came in, I thought to myself, "Well, just buy one set of sheet music and make copies." And I was schooled <laughs> yes. very quickly that no, you can't that, do that you can't do that. No, no, no. Okay, so then it makes sense to me, right? That, you know, it's it's a pricey operation, right? Right. But it's so worth it. Yeah. I mean, and, and once you buy the sheet music, you have it in your music library. Correct, and they've got quite a library, um, several, several. Uh, file the cabinets <laughs> of sheet music, but you know it, it, it allows them to have a variety, and um, you know they change up their show depending on you know what the performance or where the performance is at. I thoroughly love it when they sing for Veterans Day because they do a yeah. phenomenal job with all the different uh, armed forces. And movements. a lot of them are vets. Mm -hmm. Yes, a lot of them are vets. So it takes on sort of a double meaning. Yeah. And I have a soft spot in my heart for veterans. Anyway. Oh, I do too. Daddy I was a too. World War II vet, so I, I have a very soft spot for vets. So, um, yeah, they just are acquired as a wonderful job. There, I have to tell a little story. Uh, we had our baby grand piano, and because our office used to be in the senior center, mm -hmm. and we did all of our performances up there until we outgrew it, we kept our baby grand piano there. And when we got this office, we had a space for our baby grand piano. And I remember the day I had to go over and say, hey guys, <laughs> we need our piano back. <laughs> remember that piano you've been using for a long time? Well, we're gonna take that back. Which, the good news is, is we use it here, we use it for music lessons, we have small, um, recitals here I and mean, couldn't do it without it but I did feel really guilty for quite some time about but now they have a choir and they're doing really well so right you know we're fine we're fine <laughs> is there you know I I think we should probably wrap up here but I want to is there anything else you want to share with us is there uh, just that you know don't let uh, don't judge a book by its cover yeah. um, come down and check us out um, if you have questions if you're interested in anything we've talked about today, if you want to get involved, um, you know, come on down. You'll you'll definitely definitely uh, won't regret it. That then the senior center has always been one of the friendliest places I've ever been. It has a special place in my heart, even though we present in other places. When we get to do a show at the senior center, it's really special. Mm -hmm. It's just got an ambiance that no place else has. So if you're over 50, and that, how about 49 and three quarters? <laughs> well, if your spouse is over 50 and you're not, you can still join. Oh, if your spouse there, you so, there you go. So I would seriously consider going down to the senior center and just being part of the fun, because that's exactly what it is. It's fun, and like we showed today, it's just full of art. Mm -hmm. It's full of art, it's full of fun, it's, you know, more things than you can imagine. And this has been like, we have behaved through this. We oh, have. I I'm know. impressed with us. I am too. I think we just need to go out and have a cup of coffee to celebrate. I think so too. <laughs> <laughs> Wait a minute, I don't drink coffee. You can have coffee. I'll I have don't tea. drink coffee either, so we'll yeah. have tea. There you go. Or soda. Or something. Yeah. Rub your floats. There oh, that works. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Rachel. I, you know, again, I want to all encourage you to go to the Senior Center in Sydney. It's just an absolute blast. And um, okay, I'll be waiting stay for you to come tuned. your application, Ellen. Okay, I'll be there. I, and you have it on camera. I said I would have the proof. <laughs> it's not really that expensive. It's not. It's not. Um, we're a nonprofit organization, so we do a lot of grant requests and things like that. And we're supported locally by the United Way, the, the City of Sydney, and the Shelby County right. Commissioners, which are all very wonderful. Um, we appreciate all that they do for us. Um, so it, it, that enables us to keep it economically. Um, it's what? Thirty dollars a year. Wow, that's even less. Yeah. Than I, okay, so I have no excuse for not having yeah. joined. Two dollars and fifty cents a month, which is cheaper than a cup of coffee, 
at most places. Wow. So yeah, thirty dollars a month if you live in Shelby County. If That's you're out right. of Shelby County, it's thirty five. And we have a lot of members that, that live in yeah. Do I get to count County. in or out of Shelby County? You get to count out. Oh wow. So you're thirty five. Okay, I think I can swing. <laughs> I would hope so. <laughs> but thanks for joining us. We'll be back again next week with another uh, episode of ArtCast. Thank you.